Welcome to the fourth homework video. The homeworks leading up to this one were meant to get you familiar with the graphics pipeline, some useful rendering techniques for VR, and of course GLSL and JavaScript. This week, you'll pick up the hardware during the lab session or office hours and finally see a VR experience. In this assignment, you'll assemble the headset, implement stereo rendering, and correct for the distortion caused by the lenses. You'll learn that in all things VR, the software and hardware are very closely intertwined, so pay close attention to the hardware specs we provide. You'll be using them throughout the assignment. In the lab, you'll receive hardware for the rest of the quarter. You'll receive a ViewMaster VR Viewer housing from Mattel, an LCD panel and driver board, a spacer, and required cabling. You'll also find the VR Duino, IMU, and TeenC that you'll need for homeworks 5 and 6, so make sure not to lose these components. Once you get your hardware, you'll have to assemble the headset. Start by taping the spacer to the back of the LCD panel with double-sided tape. You can find plenty of it in the lab. Connect the driver board to the LCD panel with the pins facing down. Tape the driver board to the acrylic spacer with the double-sided tape at an angle like so. This will allow you to route the cables out of the headset more easily. Connect the HDMI and USB cables to the driver board, and then to your computer. Make sure you're able to get an image on the display before mounting it into the headset. The display holder in the headset holds the display in place via a clamping mechanism. To install the display unit, slide it into the top holder slot and push up. This will cause the bottom slot to move down. While the holder is pushed apart, slide the cables through the slot on the bottom of the back plate. Once the cables are in the slot, gently let go of the display, allowing it to be clamped from the bottom. Once clamped, make sure the cables are still routed through the slot and the housing can be closed. There is one final bit of tuning left. When you open up the homework 4 starter code, you'll see a white line rendered down the middle of the screen. Make sure that this white line is aligned with the white line on the bottom slot of the holder. This will ensure that your display is centered in the headset and is required for the stereo rendering and lens distortion to work correctly. Once assembled, you'll start implementing the stereo rendering in section 2.1. In your starter code, you'll see the exact same scene rendered to each eye, but once you compute the view and perspective transforms for each eye, you'll see a correct stereo pair like this one. If everything is implemented correctly, you should be blown away by the 3D-ness of the floating teapots in front of you. One thing you may find useful when trying to debug with the browser window on the small screen is to undock your developer tools from Chrome and drag it onto your computer screen. This will make debugging much easier. In section 2.2, you'll implement lens distortion correction, which corrects for the optical distortion induced by the lenses. You can toggle the distortion correction on and off by pressing the one button on your keyboard. Once you have the correction implemented, you'll see something along these lines. In section 2.2.3, you'll search for the K1 and K2 parameters that remove the distortion. You can decrease and increase the values of K1 with the 2 and 3 button keys on your keyboard, and decrease and increase the values of K2 with the 4 and 5 button keys. You might find it useful to display a grid pattern by pressing the space bar when searching for the K1 and K2 parameters. Again, Make sure your screen is centered in the headset by checking that the white line separating the two views is aligned with the white lines on the headset itself. This will ensure that the lenses are aligned with your lens distortion centers. Good luck and make sure to come to office hours or post on Piazza if you have any questions.